How's it going, guys? Been a while since I've posted a video. But, believe me, it was for good reason. I've been spending a lot of time working on this. This is just a bit of a test stand that it's kind of on right now. But all those who are big fans of the Siren community immediately know what that is. That is the Chrysler Victory Siren. Many different names that it's gone under, the Chrysler Bell Victory Air Raid Siren, or just the Chrysler Air Raid Siren, which was eventually the final moniker that it had. The Chrysler Victory Siren actually refers to the first generation of these, not the test generation, the prototypes that Bell Laboratories developed, but on the older, on the, the pictures of the last generation that you can find, which is what this is based off of, you can see that it does have the name Chrysler Air Raid Siren specifically. Nothing more, nothing less. So that is what this will be called, is the Chrysler Air Raid Siren been a long time coming of me trying to design this. Um, a lot of time with work that kind of got me caught up, so I was, wasn't able to work on sirens very much, but I finally got around to doing it. Now keep in mind, this is a prototype. The horn and compressor section is, base, is essentially done, as is the, the final base. It does have the mounts that would traditionally mount the uh, the siren, the compressor section to the base. And uh, this is actually half of the base. The rest of it's um, not with me right now. It hasn't been printed yet. And then I have a temporary motor stand to hold the, the electric motor that drives it. You can see that it's all there. I also did have to design my own dog bone style universal joint for it to actually connect the motor shaft to it. So if you're, if anyone has one-tenth scale RC cars, you probably recognize that. But this is also modeled myself. Now the siren is in tenth scale. This is one-tenth scale, so quite larger than the other sirens I typically design. And there's my hand, just for scale, to kind of put it in perspective. So it is one-tenth scale, so it is pretty big. It's not gigantic by any means, but it is certainly a big model. And I did that with the with reason, so that if you wanted to, you eventually could actually mount this entire siren to a, like, RC trailer and have it be towed behind, like, say, like a a TRX-4 truck or, like, say, a, a uh, an axial model truck. It does work, though. There's the compressor section. You can get a look at the impeller in there. And the siren is a two-stage um, compressor in here, two-stage blower. So there, I, I do have enough room to eventually make it a three-stage, but um, at this scale, the the internal space inside here just isn't aerodynamic enough to actually fit all three stages in there and make it actually work properly. So I just went ahead and just went with the with two stages, um, but it does have. It is set up like a traditional two stage centrifugal centrifugal blower, so it does have the impeller in the front, a stator section, and then another impeller behind that, and then it runs to the rotor. Um, I will go ahead and eventually do an in depth video taking the whole thing apart before I start gluing it together. But I thought I'd let you guys hear let you guys hear it for what it sounds like. One of the things that I did notice about it is that it is a very, very directional siren. So almost all of the sound comes out the front, and you get hardly anything out the um, the blower section. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. The universal joint is a little noisy, um, just because of how, how loose I had to make it in order for it to kind of give me enough play so that I can have the motor mounted in not a perfect angle. So I'll go ahead and give it a start.
You can also go ahead and take the front off so you actually can see what the rotor looks like. You, many of you probably already know what the rotor looks like in these sirens, but I know there's probably some that are probably curious. So there's the rotor, right there. And everything in this siren is ball bearing, so there's a ball bearing sitting right back there. It's hard for my camera to focus. Ball bearing right there, and then a ball bearing in the stator section at the front. There's a look down on the back side of it. If I do try to fire it up, I don't think it's going to work very well because it does need that front bearing in order for this the rotor to actually be situated correctly in the housing. I'm actually not going to fire it up. I don't want to risk damaging anything. But this is, this motor is also not bringing it up to full operating RPM, obviously. And I might also still play around with the um, the compressor stages and might actually even end up getting rid of it being two stage and actually making just a single stage with um, just a bigger a bigger impeller so I can get more volume through it um, in order to make more noise because the pressure at this scale doesn't really matter too much it's really the air volume you can you can get flowing through it um, but they usually do um, multiple stages to get a higher uh, static pressure. And the model, when it is completed, uh, it will have the rest of the frame there, obviously, and as well as the motor, the en the engine housing. And once it is done, it will have a functioning clutch, so that you can actually disconnect the entire rotating assembly in here from the actual motor. And my intention is. To actually, f it's going to be electrically powered because that's the only way you can do it at this scale. But my intention is to eventually have this motor, the electric motor that runs it, actually hidden in the engine block of the the 331 firepower that's going to be inside of this thing. And I am going to attempt to try to actually model the entire engine, which is going to be the most difficult part. This was actually relatively simple compared to the engine. And uh, I'm going to see about trying to find some way of having the engine actually make noise. Um, it'll all be mechanical, of course. It's not going to be electronic, but I'm going to attempt to have it, to have the engine actually create noise that would make it sound somewhat, of, or to replicate that of a V8 at this scale, um, so that if you wanted to, you actually could run the motor and then disconnect the clutch so that it wouldn't actually spin it, and you can actually just have the motor, the engine is idling. Um, but that is that might be too complicated. We're going to have to see see what happens once I kind of dig into the engine section, uh, which I haven't gotten to yet. But I do have I do have the motor, the engine cover, and I do have the other extension for the um, the actual base that the whole thing sits on. Uh, eventually it might be able to rotate. I'm not sure if I'm going to be making it um, able to or not yet at this point, just because of um, how difficult it actually would be to get it to do that. Um, especially, I mean, thankfully the scale is a little bit larger, so it's not nearly as difficult as some of my other sirens, which I have made, managed to make rotate, such as the Thunderbolt. However, I, it's, it will be indirect. It's not going to be driven off of the, the same motor that runs the entire system, because it's just, that's too complicated with the gear reduction and everything like that. Um, and it will also have, most likely, a potentiometer on the side of the control cabinet, so you actually could run the, run the motor up quicker and slower so you can actually kind of get the pitch that you would out of it um, to kind of get to idle and do the kind of noises you want with it. So it's not going to be just a um, just a siren that you plug in. This is this happens to be USB powered as are all of my sirens. Um, so it won't be the kind of siren that you just plug in and it runs at one speed like the 500 or the Model A or the Model D. This one will actually be um, adjustable which is going to be interesting. Uh, long time coming, but uh, and it also probably will be quite expensive just because of the amount of labor that goes into this. Um, but I thought I'd show you guys. I thought you guys would get a real treat out of that. And take a look at it. It is missing some details, um, mainly just because of how difficult it is to do this with fusion. Um, such as the gussets that actually reinforce the throats of the horns on the actual stator plate. And then doesn't it doesn't say American Blower because at this size my print um, 
my print resolution is just not good enough to actually get the tiny little writing that says American Blower on the side. So that probably will eventually be a decal that will be on it. And it will also have decals that will say Chrysler Air Raid Siren on the side eventually as well. But that is all going to come later. And I think, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with, with this, with the prototype model quite yet. I might actually, I might weather it. Um, because it is, it is my prototype filament, so it is all just plain, plain gray. Um, which I, I typically do just so that I can kind of see how it prints before I try to actually make a final project. So we'll see how it kind of, how it behaves. But, um, all these pieces are significantly thicker than most of my other prints, so it does take a bit longer and consumes a lot more material. But the reason why I did that was actually because I wanted the, um the plastic to not be transparent so you can actually see through it so like there's the sun i didn't want any of the plastic um transparent enough that you actually could see light through it as um i discovered i had a problem with my model sevens um but yeah but there it is let me go ahead and actually install the the stator section again really quickly i'll give it another quick run okay so now that's reinstalled and this whole section eventually will be glued together so this, 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 these, these are all made of several parts. So as you, as you were able to see, that the horn and stator section comes off, as does this uh, ring right here. This ring is a separate part, as is the actual section of the compressor section, and then the back plate right here. Those are all separate pieces. So all together, there's five, five pieces for the actual blower section, and then. Not including the uh, internals, obviously. But let me go ahead and give it another quick spin. You guys can hear what it sounds like. They bought the ball bearings in in tandem with this thing having a very very large rotating mass gives it a, a very very respectable wind down but there will be most more videos coming up to kind of go over what it actually looks like on the inside and kind of just give you more perspective of what it's doing but that'll come later on the channel so you have to stay tuned for that but uh I appreciate you guys watching though and coming along with me on this project. I definitely will keep you all posted as to what um, improvements I do make and kind of going over what it eventually will look like when it's completed. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Comment, rate, and subscribe. You guys really don't have to do that kind of stuff, but it helps me out a lot and also lets me know your guys' feedback. And I'll see you in the next video.